obviously it's a keynote, so we cannot go down into some Python code, but we should rather say it on the top and say maybe ask ourselves, okay, what advice can we actually give? And we thought, okay, why does data science often fail? So this in itself is a little of a provocation, obviously, because here, obviously, everyone's only successful. <laughs> we, we talked about that. Yeah? But if you look around, honestly, not everything is perfect. And we thought maybe we collect a bit what dangers we are seeing. And uh, Marcel obviously has a lot of experience in uh, Lufthansa, and I myself, I'm in a, as a market analyst, we work with a lot of companies, so we have a great overview, I think, on what's happening and what's going and what's not going uh, so well. So we thought we'd combine this and give you a bit of insight on what we see uh, what's really important for your data science projects and initiatives. Marcel. Thank you, Carsten. And, uh with all the uh, internationality today, let me just say a quick and personal, uh, very local servus uh, this morning. Uh, thank you for having me on the stage. What we found after having uh, uh, thought a lot and uh, talked through it are these uh, five factors uh, that are extremely important and that are very special, basically. You need to have a vision. You need management attention, of course, um, and uh, that might be pretty new to you. You need to fail fast, think big, start small. Okay, and Marcel, you have to okay Marcel, may I, may I interrupt you? Sure. I mean, maybe you are on the wrong stage right now. I mean, ah, that might be. we had the data festival, that not at some, some management meeting here. Ah, true, so true. I honestly, I'm sorry, honestly I these are the usual suspects. I, yeah? I saw some shocked faces here, <laughs> starting to yawn. So, oh my God, I heard this like a hundred times. <laughs> and um, so maybe. So sorry, I was just kidding. I was yeah, just kidding. <laughs> of course. So maybe we should go a little bit more in, into the, the flash of things and take a look at what, what are the real dangers. And honestly, these uh, things we. We heard them so many times, and honestly, they are true for any type of project, if you think about it. It's not only data science. Yeah? This is whatever you try to achieve, basically. You need to have these, these common success factors. So we thought, let's drive a little bit into, and um, it's our very subjective view, a lot of uh, times, and we, we sat together and, and collected these things, and we thought, wow, well, actually, some might be quite controversial, uh, exactly like this first one here. Um, because we think it's extremely important to point your initiatives and give them some real target, some real priorities. And typically, you obviously, you start with the use cases. But we have seen so many data science teams, data labs, that basically try to do anything. Yeah? They take on every job they are giving just to prove that they can do anything. But this is totally wrong from our perspective. So we think don't shoot randomly. Um, try really to be focused, and how? This is the big question. But we think one guideline could be, please think about impact on P&L. P&L is profit and loss, so basically select those use cases where you are pretty sure that you can have a positive impact either on revenue or decreasing cost. And this is a, a pretty clear guideline, and basically also be brave and say no to anyone where this is not clear. That brings you some use cases and you think, okay, if this, is, uh, if this is successful, would be nice to know maybe the outcome, but is it really affecting our P&L? We are totally certain this is controversial, and this is actually why we put on a panel this afternoon with exactly this topic. We want to discuss with some more from you um, what do you think about this topic of impact on P&L? How important is it? But we think it's really important to be focused and guided and prioritize your use cases accordingly. Okay, the next one is about uh, surfing, obviously. So uh, you are, might be or are um, experienced um, about delivering your stuff in waves or sprints. And uh, we think that this is obviously very important. Obviously, um, if you don't do it already, uh, focus on speed. Do not focus on perfection. That's especially true if you're working in a knowledge-driven company or a larger company like I do. So basically, you need to go um, and aim for what we call the Durchstich. Yeah? Um, also here, very German, very local word. Uh, that means breakthrough. Uh, you need to break through to get the data flowing. That's pretty important. Um, and we discussed that beforehand, and then we found that what is also pretty important here and what is special about a data project, because 
quick wins. We had that fail fast and quick wins or start small on the first the usual suspect slide. But what we talk about here is also do the second Durchstich then because you need the feedback to get the data back. So do not be afraid to not be perfect, to not have feedback loops closed or data flows closed, but uh, do it, but then have the stamina to get the data back. So do the Durchstich, but do it twice. The first Durchstich, you get the data in the one direction. The second Durchstich needs to be collected afterwards, and then you collect the data back in order to close the loop on flowing the data. Let the data flow freely. All right, the third danger we are seeing is that a lot of data science teams are really focused on delivering projects. But what we see is this is often not really sustainable. Yeah, so a project ends by definition, and then we have this big challenge that everyone is talking about basically is how to operationalize it. How to get it into something sustainable that's delivering value for the business in an ongoing way. And maybe there's one way of thinking about this, which, which uh, we really like, it's the thinking of a data product. Because a product is really something different. If you deliver a product, you deliver not only a set of features that it can do, but you also deliver a roadmap, for example. And if you think about a product, you also deliver some uh, training around it and some ongoing support and so on. So having a product mindset, we think, is something that, that could guide you into avoiding some of the typical pitfalls that projects uh, in the end uh, lead to. OK. we. Uh you see two pictures here. One is a uh, workshop-like environment, garage, and the other one, so I'm coming from aviation, so I needed to put this one up, is a factory, obviously. Um, you need to have both. Um, you need to work in the garage. You need to get it shipped. You need to get it through. You need to get it done in a very hands-on style. Pull your sleeves up and do the stuff. I was talking about that before, right? Do the Durchstich um, and embrace the garage spirit. The other thing is, if you don't get it scale, you will fail as well. You need to have the yin and yang of this in balance. Shipping it and scaling it are both needed, are both necessary, and you need to understand the sensitive interplay between these two factors. Be it two teams, we experimented with two teams before, that didn't work out for us as well, um, or that well as we thought, so we thought, okay, maybe it's important to have different modes where you put your, the same team in the garage mode and the other, or the same team again at another time in a factory mode. So the people who are concerned about getting it shipped are also concerned about getting it scaled. We see, each, uh, we see other um, attempts where separate teams also work out well. It just depends on your environment, on your um, context, what might be successful or what might be not. But the yin and yang, that's for us, that's important, need to be in balance. Yeah, balance is the topic here. Not only focus on one, because that will not be enough to have a successful initi initiative. Now, a different topic. I don't know how many of you have uh, thought about this one, but uh, we think ethics or data ethics, how it's often called, is super important. And I would even say if you don't have a guideline for your company or for your team that's actually doing data science projects, you're a little bit like sending them into a labyrinth without any exit, because there are so many things, so many pitfalls uh, coming out of legislation. I mean, just in the last 12 months, we have seen so much um, uh, coming up in terms of this topic. Just in May, uh, GDPR came into effect. So we have legislative um, outside factors that needs to be obeyed. But this is obviously not, not everything. I mean, everyone will agree probably that if you obey any law, you still could act unethically. So. It's really a set of principles, it's a set of guidelines in the end that help you to do the right things. And we see a lot of uncertainty around here. So, but what we need for the data scientists and the data engineers who really do the work is some clear guidelines. So do you enter and use gender, race, religion for this model or not? And it's not easy to decide, but someone has to. And it's a bit of unfair to let like a data scientist decide now, hmm, I want to build the best model, but I'm not sure. Yeah, can I use it or not? And how do I treat the, the typical bias? How do I even understand the bias that's in the data that I use to train my model? And so on. There's uh, lots of questions, but we think 
not addressing these topics, not starting to come up with guidelines around data ethics is really dangerous because you will lose efficiency, you will, you will lose motivation of the teams, and maybe even in the end you do something that might be either unlawful or unethical, and maybe you didn't even do it on purpose, it's just because everyone works as designed, but in the end the, the output of the process is something like a, a model that is maybe scoring people in a way that is typically something that you don't want to do. So, ethic guidelines, we think it's, it's very important, um, and at this festival I introduced this topic uh, last year in a, in a in a track, and this year we will address it in a panel discussion. Also going on today, this afternoon, if you like to, to join us, I have some, some pretty um, amazing people also there in the panelist, um, and maybe that's something to also to look at. Also be sure to visit the GDPR, uh, right. the GDPR discussion tomorrow, uh, moderated by Alex, um, uh, because we talk about compliance as well, and think about that. The easiest way to be compliant if you have no guideline at all is to do nothing, and that's not really good. Okay, so um, if I'm on a stage, I need to feature Tom Brady. I'm a problematic fanboy in this case, so I'm sorry for that, but um, it was important for us to, um, to make understood what we think about uh, hiring data scientists. That's important, obviously, yeah? We need to develop the talent, we need to hire this, uh, the data science and develop the skills on our own. Developing skills without any kind of roles in place, without any kind of operating model, will not lead you to win. The thing here is that especially the very sensitive interplay between architecture, engineering, and data science is important. We found at us, again, for having that separated into uh, three different roles, is uh, the way we do it at the moment um, and is su successful for us. Although, what we also see is if you separate the roles too much uh, um, in order to get a clarity on, okay, you're doing this, like in a football, in a good football team, you're doing this position, you're doing this position, you're doing this position, well, that's pretty cool. On the other hand, somehow, and also in football, you need to have some trick plays, yeah, where somebody's doing something unexpected, where somebody's acting out of their role. And for us, it is extremely important that, or as you can see, it might sometimes be extremely important for success that people act outside of their role and go beyond what they were actually uh, supposed to do. And here um, it comes, if you have too many roles that are too clearly defined, then you also have a problem because then everybody's waiting for the other guy and, or the other girl. And then you have what we call the, the beach volleyball effect sometimes. Yeah, two players are on the same field of the beach volleyball course, and then the ball hits directly in between because there is the German saying, dem du ihn, ich hab ihn sicher. Yeah? Um, and we have that problem, or see that problem in role definition, so uh, having a 100 or 50 person strong data science team will not let you win. You need to understand how they operate and you need to revise your operating model um, in order to be successful. We at Lufthansa, at my um, department, are in the fifth revision now of our operating model in five years. So we, every year, look at what's going well and what would be even better if we changed something. Then I think another really important topic is you might have beautiful results, successful results, prototype that uh, prove millions of increased revenue or reduced cost. But then we see so many uh, data scientists and data science teams failing in implementing that, in getting it operationalized. Yeah? And you are so excited. You see this model works. I got this improvement look at this, and then you get complete negligence from the business departments. They say, okay, looks nice, but sorry, I will just do as I used to do, and uh, this doesn't really fit into my process, or I don't have the people, or I don't want actually to lay off the people because you automate my process now here. And so there's so many factors that you, you do not really get it into <coughs> production, into actual use. So we think it's super important to look at translation and in the end, at engagement. Yeah? And maybe think even about a new role that is extremely important in all this talking about operating models, um, is maybe the engagement manager. So someone whose job is translation, basically even uh, both ways, 
Yeah? So often it's, it's not super clear for a data scientist what the actual problem really is and, and how does it really fit into the business process and vice versa, the results of models of data science uh, need to be really translated into uh, business terms, business processes, it needs to be very, very clear um, how is this implemented. And if you really think about it, maybe it should be clear before you start your project. So. We, we had this um, management um, uh, commitment on the slide of the usual suspects. But you might be thinking about what does that really mean? It means if you work on a use case, you need someone in the business process, someone that can decide over change, and this person needs to be totally clear what will happen if you are successful with building maybe a model to automate a process. And this person needs to be committed up front that they say, okay, I want this, I want this automation, I understand that I have to reassign five people after that, and if you are successful, dear data science team, I will do that. And I will actually see the benefits in doing that. And if you don't have that, if you're not able to translate it well, or you don't have this type of commitment, maybe you don't even do this use case and go to the next one. That is something we have learned. We also saw on the usual suspect slide before 80% of the work might be data integration. We think that 80% of the work in the future, especially for if you're in a not fully tech or not fully data driven environment, will be translation work. Yeah. For the next one, <laughs> I'm going to probably get beaten uh, because we are in a data festival. It all starts with data, that's fair. Um, my point or our point was. Um, if you do and start with data integration at large, if that's your starting point, for us, that's a, um, a uh, sign that uh, your initiative, your way of dealing with it might fail. The thing here is um, we have usually an abundance of data. It's just not in the right format, just not in the right way, just not in the right latency, whatever. So there is a lot of data that we have usually um, there might be also differences. Uh, and the data you need to integrate um, is mostly use case driven. And I'm a fan of having platforms together where everything is put into place, where you have an easiness to access, where you do not need to have lots of data cleansing or lots of data integration. I'm a big fan of it. What we just say is that if you start with a data integration at large, it will kill you. Um, and that's uh, the point we try to make here. Learn to swim in the pond. You have the data, you have some parts integrated, you begin to take other parts again, you shall not leave that uh, from another perspective, or speaking from another perspective, you shall not leave that out of focus. You need to focus on integration. If that's your starting point, um, that's not enough. That's clearly not enough. Yeah, from water to fire. <laughs> You all know this uh, data is the new oil. We thought maybe data is the new wood. Wood is also a raw material. And this uh, alludes a little bit on the big question most people or many people have right now. Where do I actually place uh, the analytics? Meaning, where do I place the data scientists? Where is the best place? Is it a central data lab? Is this like a... Um, is it placed in IT? Is it placed in one business department? Should I centralize everything? Should I, what, what is my, my model here? And, and we thought this might be a, a picture. Yeah? So if you pl place analytics close to the wood, meaning maybe into the forest, it might be a little bit too far away from where the heat is, where something's happening. So where, where's the heat? The heat is in the business processes, obviously, in companies. Yeah? There's something happening, and the wood is burning, meaning the data is used for something, to, to run a process, to analyze it, to maybe improve a process, whatever. Maybe to run even your business model based on data. But this is where the fire is. And um, so if you, if you move too far away from this campfire, from where the action is, where the heat is generated, then you will probably be not successful or not su as successful as you could be. So in question, put the analytics in the business department, spread it out across the company. And then if that is the, the starting thinking model about it, then try to think, OK, where are things that we better centralize? where we maybe want to avoid that things are re repeated too many times across any business department. Um, and for us, that's the right mindset. We are not saying all data science should happen in the 
uh, in the business uh, processes, in the business departments, but we think that's the right approach of thinking about it. And we see a lot of companies that think we start with a centralized team, but um, the ones that did that, most of them we are working with right now, are changing that. They're really now saying, okay, this worked maybe as a starting point, maybe to get the budget, which is very pragmatic, obviously. But at some point, we need to be, have better links into the business. One of the problems of operationalizing is maybe addressed better. The problem of translating might be addressed better if I'm much just closer to the business department. There's not a universal approach to this. Every company has to, to work that out for themselves because there's a different culture, there's a different setup, there are different skill sets and know-how levels, obviously. But for us, it's a little bit about the, the thinking model, and we think if you start or uh, think very, very centralized, this is not the optimal way. We place this one in the end to wake you up. Um, <laughs> Okay, so this would describe a relationship status as uh, it's complicated, um, maybe. But think about this, look at these two. Um, what we think is, um, we, we talked about management attention, right? What we think you need is management love. Uh, what does that mean, actually? Um, it means that even if your relationship sometimes to executives might be complicated, um, and again, think of these two here. Um, there is an affection beyond rationality. And as you think about that, that is love, maybe. So we're not here to explain love. Uh, um, but this is what we mean with that in that context. Yeah? So uh, what we actually mean is sometimes you might need seemingly irrational, um, irrational patience, for example, with the data science team, with the data team, with the analytics team, uh, as an executive, in order for them to deliver successfully, finally. Um, sometimes, you all know um, how problematic it might be to uh, extrapolate or estimate cost or durations of a project uh, when you work data-driven. Um, and that's usually a way of steering you. Yeah? And our point is, you can have that, Maybe not that, but you can have management love um, if you um, stick to some or um, if you go for some of the dangers and focus on them here, um, avoid them, the trip falls. For example, if you stick to a really P&L impact, you will make yourself understood that this is really important to you. Then executives might begin to love you more. Um, and the point here is what I say is you need the patience and you need some kind of unconditional progressive support, which is not the support that supports you as long as it's fashionable or as long as you generate great results. You need to an executive that supports you through the valleys of problems, the valleys of despair sometimes. Um, and this is what we call unconditional support, which is love, again. So... Nice ending, I would say. Um, we just put it on one slide. Um, the 10 dangers we think um, should be uh, looked at and maybe avoided or at least addressed. And I would like to end the session with a, a little surprise, actually. Uh, someone dropped a secret, Marcel, and uh, someone told me it's your birthday today. <laughs> so I have a present for you, the official Data Festival t-shirt, of Thank course. Thank you very much. So let's give Marcel a big Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Happy okay. birthday. Vielen Dank. <laughs> Danke. Vielen Dank. And that's it. That's it. That was the opening of this year's Data Festival. Thanks for coming again. Enjoy the two days. We have lots of interesting stuff. And uh, think about it. We are here to learn, but also to have fun, which we just learned is uh, proven that this also increases the, the learning factor. So th thanks again. Enjoy the show. And let's do it. Machen wir noch ein Selfie?